This is me when I was two years old, there on my mother's hip. I'm the youngest of the six Deckelman daughters. My oldest sister was in college when I was born, and in this picture, we're dropping off number three for her freshman year. Fast forward a few years, we're sitting on my parents' front steps. I have a few nieces and nephews now, and I'm entering the period of my life where I thought I looked like a boy. People didn't understand my family. Wow, six girls, your poor dad. Were you all tomboys? Were you an accident? Um, no, my dad says we were all loved and wanted, and my mom's a big sports fan. I think she always wanted a boy. Was I supposed to be a boy? I seem to think like a lot of boys that I know. I love math. I'm good at spatial reasoning. I'm the only girl on my baseball team. No, I don't play softball. My mom put me on the baseball team. Fast forward to middle school, when I become a girl who codes. It's official to my 12-year-old brain. I think my brain is more masculine than it is feminine. But I am a girl, and I meet other girls like me. I enter a program of 100 students, 50 young women and 50 young men from all kinds of backgrounds across Montgomery County, Maryland. We are a part of the math, science, and computer science magnet program. We didn't have Instagram or selfies or even cell phones back then. These were the devices we were working with. We used them to make fun projects with inputs and outputs for turtle art and animations and hypercard. Our mostly black and white text does not compare to the smartphone and laptop screens that you have today. But nevertheless, we had fun building worlds. So much fun I had that I continued the program in high school and I chose to major in computer science in college. I was well prepared and thrilled for my first job as a computer programmer and developer at the Naval Research Lab. I had done it. I had become a computer scientist. But something happened along the way that I was not prepared for. When I left my high school program of gender parity, I became one of seven women in a major of 60 people. And when I started my first job, I was the only woman on my team, and I think the only female engineer on the floor. I thought there would be more women in tech by now. I was wrong. And as it turns out, a part of a trend unique to computer science. After women's lib and the feminist movement of the 60s, more women were entering the workforce. As you can see in the graph, in fields like medicine, law, the physical sciences, and even computer science, we were approaching gender parity. But something happened in 1984 only with computer science, the orange line. And we begin to see this, a steady decline that brings us to the numbers of today. In 1995, almost 40% of computer scientists were women. Today, it's less than a quarter. And if we do nothing in 10 years, the number of women in computing will drop to 22%. Given these stats, it's hard to believe there was a time when more women were in computing, or that the first programmer in the 1800s, the first program was written by a woman, Ada Lovelace or that in the 1940s, the first computer, the ENIAC, was programmed by a team of women. I'm not here to talk to you about why there is a decline or about a time when there were more women in computer science. I'm here to tell you that the lack of women in computing, and I'll extrapolate to a lack of people of color too, is a problem that stagnates innovation. Because as we know, the more diverse the team, the more creative the team. An idea borne out by scientific research. And I am here to tell you what we can do about it and what's going on outside this room to work on this problem. Become a computer science teacher. 
That's one thing we can do. And join the national movement, Computer Science for All, that seeks to empower all US students from kindergarten to 12th grade to learn computer science and to be equipped with the computational thinking skills they need to be creators in the digital world, not just consumers, and to be active citizens in our technology-driven world. CS for All strives for rigorous, sustainable, and most importantly, inclusive computer science education in the K-12 space. That means computer science is not an elective, but a requirement, an expectation for all students. I don't mean to say that everyone will become a computer scientist, but I do mean to pave the way for more women and more underrepresented minorities to have the chance, and for all of us to be equipped with skills to bring computer science to the fields that we do choose. Computer science is changing everything from medicine, to art, to policing, and even our social fabric. Organizations like Code.org are working to empower teachers to bring a diverse set of computer science materials into their classrooms. Imagine how innovative we could be and the positive impact we could make if the teams and the leaders that make up our tech sector represented all of the diverse and rich perspectives that we can bring to the table, not just a select few. I wonder what our products would be like if we had more women and people of color contributing to their development. Like Joy Bolamini, a researcher from the MIT Media Lab, she founded the Algorithmic Justice League. She works to uncover and change bias in algorithms like facial recognition. When she started working with facial recognition software, the algorithms did not recognize her face unless she wore a white mask. Or Jeanette Wing, head of data science at Columbia University and a computer science researcher and professor. She mainstreamed the term computational thinking and that it is a basic literacy for all of us to learn like reading, writing, and arithmetic. We need more Joys and Jeanettes, and we need more computer science teachers. And then you will feel and see the hope that I do in my students in creative computation here at Avenues, or from my Girls Who Code class a few years ago. Oh, the passion and perspective they will bring to make positive impact on this digitally driven world. Fast forward to the present. I am now a mother with a two-year-old on my hip. Screens and technology are changing her brain in ways that we are only just beginning to understand. We can only imagine the technologies that will be available to her in the future. Whatever they may be, I'm convinced the more women, the more underrepresented minorities contributing to their development, the more innovative the technology and the more people they will serve. Thank you.